Green skins have no lack of cheap armor piercing units, and as a result, squig herds can sometimes get lost in the shuffle, but sort of like the uh, clever girls for the lizardmen, that is the uh, a cold one, I guess, a pack, I forget what they're actually called, but the squig herds are a similar type of unit, almost like a fire and forget guided armor piercing uh, missile. They've got 40 charge bonus, pretty solid, 33 weapon strength with 11 bonus versus infantry, 50 armor, only 30 unit models, but a little over 100 HP per unit model gives them a relatively low health pool overall. One of the reasons you don't see them is because of said low health pool. Also, only 18 melee defense does make them very squishy, but if you can get them uh, like one single charge on the right unit can potentially pay for themselves, especially with that 40 charge bonus here. We've got an all Gobbo build, no Grom skins, very nice. Goblin Great Shaman up on the spider, Gobbo Big Boss, Hammer of Gork, protected by some Night Gobbos, got some Pump Wagons and some squig hoppers as well. Moving in on the side here, getting a charge on some of these free company militia. We've also got, uh, I believe there's some spider riders over here, some more night goblins, a couple of nasty skulkers, warlords boys, and eight peak loons. Up against a whole bunch of free company, there's four free company, including the Regiment of Renown, which uh, is somewhere up here on the hill, looks like. Uh, spearmen with shields, Boris, pistoliers, and uh, yeah, two pistoliers, outriders, grenade launchers, a couple of great swords, firecaster, and empire knights. Let's get to it. So nice engagement here, and this is what I'm talking about. R good charge. Free company militia aren't that expensive of a unit. You see how much damage they take on the charge there from the squig herd. Granted, they are relatively low defense, only 26 melee defense on this free company. And as the spears move in, uh, squig herds do count as large targets, so the spears will get their anti-large bonus, but it looks like maybe don't even have an attack order directly there. Um, but you see, <clears throat> squig hoppers only have 18 defense as well, so it's not like they're much tankier. They are slightly tankier in that they have more models and more overall HP. But uh, yeah, this unit of squig, ho uh, squig herds rather gets in here really nice damage. The other one also collapsing down the hill. Got some stuff going on here. The spiders kind of getting involved, but let's focus in on the squigs. Just having an absolute ball. <laughs> Those walking mouths with legs. Uh, I mean, obviously they're walking. If, if, they're, if they have legs, they, yeah. <laughs> anyway, they're also rolling and just in general having a grand old time. Uh, Itchy Nuisance being used here to debuff the melee attack of these Spearmen, the Free Company, or yeah, all the Free Company, Sterling's Revenge, just getting absolutely eaten up, so pretty good stuff. They are going to now overrun both Squig Hoppers and Squig Herds into these Great Swords that are making their way over here. Nice Burning Head, though. Missed that. Ripped apart. The Warlord's Boys got a good chunk off of those Skulkers as well. Boris dives down to try and push back those Squig Hoppers, but a nice... Uh, Wah timing push up to 41 weapon strength and 50 melee attack. Oh, this is an ideal situation. Great swords don't have much melee defense. They're relatively high value armored infantry. Uh, and the squig uh, herds with that Wah timing push just get a super cost effective charge in here. They're just about out of gas anyway. But uh, some really nice damage on those great swords there before they're completely gone. Uh, where's that other unit of squig herds? Oh, yeah, I ran over into the other great sword there. So both squig herds, I mean, even just doing, yeah, like, given what they've already done to this free company militia, doing like, uh, what, a quarter to a third of the HP damage of those great swords, also pretty good value. They don't have much leadership, although they do get more leadership when they get in range of enemy units. This used to make them actually unbreakable back in the day, but now it just gives them more leadership when they're in the uh, effect range, when there's enemies in that effect range, so. Definitely something to consider, like these squig herds holding for the time here. They're not immune to psychology like the squig hoppers are, um, but they do have in range. Or actually, no, they are immune to psychology. Would you look at that? Yeah, so they actually won't get terrified, which is nice. Uh, on, a, on a roster that doesn't have much immune to psychology and generally low leadership, that is one kind of nice specialist trait. But given that they're squ so squishy, generally if they fight a monster, they're just going to rout anyway due to the fact that they'll lose. But... Uh, they definitely did okay. Empire Knights pushing away some more of those squig hoppers uh, from the forest there. The big spider just holding the, uh, the ground for the time being. Uh, knights push back. They are going to lose out to those night goblins, it looks like, unfortunately. But the pistoliers and the knights were able to get those uh, skulkers and night goblins away. There are some spider riders rallied back in the forest there, though. So we'll have to kind of keep that in the background. Uh, yeah, Squig Herds get in for one last hurrah. They're trying to get at these Great Swords, which is obviously the best target for them to go after here. And against specific factions, like if there's a specific unit that you think Squig Herds would be good against, like Great Swords are a great uh, 
Example, infantry, armored infantry, relatively high value but low melee defense. Uh, squig herds are great against them specifically, but again, you've also got these pump wagons, you've got kind of all sorts of units that fill that, that armor piercing role right in that like, you know, 500 to 650 cost range. Uh, squig herds are on the low end of that range though, and especially working in tandem like we saw that initial engagement uh, like had the, the you know the night goblins in there supporting had the chariots and the squig hoppers kind of all collapsing um, I definitely wouldn't say they're meant to operate alone, but in groups They can definitely be surprising over here the smoke bomb popped on those piss layers skulkers didn't get much damage value But they do help those spider riders corral and finish off the piss layers hammer of gork still online very critically uh, the Outriders could potentially go try and shut that down, but at what cost is the question? Squig Hoppers, Squig Herds finally pushed away for good. Uh, we do still have the big boss on station, though, and the Great Shaman, so still very close. Empire kind of securing this high ground position here for the missiles and the Bright Wizard to chill on. Uh, but the Hammer of Gork still firing away this whole time. This is one of the more interesting maps in terms of terrain. Quite a bit of kind of varied terrain all over the place here, but... Uh, here, Sneaky Stabbing used on the Goblin Great Shaman. They need Stabbing also on Boris. So his melee defense is debuffed, the uh, Spider's melee attack is buffed, and the, God, the uh, Big Boss also moves in himself. And as you guys should know from watching my videos, 2v1 single entity combat, almost always the two wins. And I mean, granted, uh, Spider probably could have beat Boris by himself there, just given the difference in HP, but better to make sure. Boris just straight up dies there, and that is a huge blow to the Empire morale, you can see. They still have quite a few units left on station. The uh, Outriders did actually go over to try and finish that Hammer of Gork, but nasty hidden Night Gobbos going to get in there. They're still firing a handful of grenades, though. Big Spider, whoops, and uh, getting shot in the back by some Pistoliers. 120 armor certainly helps, but the Pistoliers do enough armor-piercing damage that uh, they, they got some damage in. But they're now completely out of ammunition. Definitely not great for them. The Fire Wizard moving in. He's trying to fireball this uh, Goblin Big Boss here. But a lot of these units are just going to want to shatter as soon as any of the green skins get close. So we'll fast forward through this cleanup phase. Spider actually does get caught out here by the Empire Knights and the Pistoliers, who do a reasonable job in melee <laughs> considering what they are. Uh, both immediately getting terrified, though. Well, not immediately, but quickly getting terrified. Pistlier is riding once again to try and save the day, as is traditional. Outriders with grenade launchers still have a little bit of ammo left, so perhaps they can make their presence felt. But uh, what you know what else is still online making its presence felt is the Hammer of Gork. Tiny bit of ammunition left. You debuff these knights here. And they hit him. Ooh, right on the money. Very nice shot. And that uh, just about ends things. No, actually, balance power are still even more close towards the center. Potentially another fireball being thrown. A hammer of Gork just about out of ammunition. Fireball does make contact, doesn't do too much damage to the Great Shaman. Great Shaman, whatever you want to call him. Grenades also, a little bit of damage there, trying to equalize things. Pistoliers, though, getting tied up by these Spider Riders. They quickly get torn apart, and it's just leading to an army losses situation for the Empire. Maybe one more fireball left. Fire Wizard making his final stand. He does indeed sling a fireball, which somehow misses the giant spider. <laughs> and the spider and the riders clean up. Terror takes hold, and that should be pretty much it. No, last few Pistoliers, of course. Leave it to the Pistoliers to hold out to the end. <laughs> and there it is. Fun stuff. I like the no, no Grom skins. Very thematic, kind of all Gobbo and Squig build. Not an orc in sight. Big fan of that, so thanks for sending that one in. Uh, honestly, a lot of the heavy lifting was done by the Goblin Great Shaman. To be honest, uh, not a lot paid for itself outside of that. Uh, like, one random unit of Night Gobbos here. Like, uh, not even either of the ROR's paid for themselves. Spider Riders, again, one kind of random one did. Squig Hoppers, in interestingly enough, none of them paid for themselves. But, uh, I mean, the two squig herds do, not like their absolute runaway success, but at the very least cost effective. And uh, considering kind of the, di you see the difference here, there's not too much difference in their performance, at least in this battle, as compared to the squig hoppers. Bump wagons also do a reasonable job, kind of right on the money where you'd expect. Hammer of Gork does some really nice damage as well. Boris, not quite enough heavy lifting at the end of the day to get it done, but the free company militia also <laughs> Struggling great swords. Yeah, I'm wondering where all the damage value went. Oh, yeah, probably on these <laughs> Grenade launchers with 220 kills 
almost 1800 damage value i mean more than double their own cost so that's awesome to see pistoliers also thousand damage value love to see that other than 700 so overall pistoliers do pretty well one of the empire knights also 133 kills 16 almost 1700 damage value 11,000 damage dealt uh, yeah they definitely got the best of the gobos out on that one flank but at the end of the day didn't end up mattering uh yeah the gobo Great shame, and I've done a, uh, I would have done this about him, honestly, except that I already have done a highlight on him, so go check that out if you haven't. But back to the Squig Herds, it's a unit that I definitely think um, bears another looking at in specific matchups. So, thinking about green skins, I mean, you already have a lot of great armor-piercing options, obviously more expensive stuff like Black Orcs, you've got tons of armor-piercing cavalry, and since the Squig Herds are sort of like cavalry, they kind of get lost in that shuffle, right? Like... Let's just compare to the Squig Hoppers. Hoppers, 150 more points does get you an extra 400 HP, which is nice. Extra 15 unit models, definitely pretty good. Uh, armor is lower, though, and the melee defense and melee attack profiles more or less the same. They have less weapon strength, less charge. They do gain Vanguard deployment and will not enrage. But they also don't gain this uh, leadership benefit of the Squigs Go Wild, right? Although they do have... A higher leadership baseline so yeah the one thing squig herds their 36 leadership is pretty appalling even with this extra 12 when they're in melee range i mean it's still only 48 which is really not great um one of the reasons they're so uh tricky to use but certainly if you can get them into the right uh engagement but uh, yeah in terms of like direct matchups i mean obviously when corn comes in i actually think squig herds are going to be a great option against corn they'll get killed really fast by everything corn has but at the same time the corn also is kind of like high damage low defense so i would imagine that that cost effective anti-infantry armor piercing will trade very well into a lot of corn units so uh, that's one future matchup potential to look at right now against warriors of chaos um it's definitely something that you could look into i mean warriors of chaos like you know, your actual Chaos Warriors, the Halberds and such, all have pretty good defense. Great weapons are okay as well. I mean, 32 is decent. Uh, it's better than Empire uh, State Troop melee defense, or uh, Great Sword melee defense even. Great Swords are another one, like Empire. You can really go a lot of different directions in this matchup, but, I mean, uh, the Squig, ha uh, Squig Herds, rather, are an option, right? That is something that you can look at. Um, yeah. Uh, also, Empire Cavalry largely relies on their melee defense. You don't really want to be using Squigs against Cav, but in a pinch you can. And if they get like a rear charge, especially uh, as long as they don't take the charge from the Empire Knights or Reichsguard or whatever, they can get some pretty solid damage in. Less than 30 melee defense on all these guys, right? Only 30 de melee defense on the Great Swords. So Empire is perhaps a matchup you could use them in as well. Um... Yeah, Elves probably all have a little bit too good of stats for them to be super effective there. Lizardmen, ah, I just don't know. I think Saurus are a little bit too meaty. And it's not like they have that much armor. Um, Tomb Kings also is probably a no. I mean, their, their leadership's just so bad against any undead. I mean, granted, they do have the immunity to psychology, right? Um, but uh, anyway, I'm kind of rambling on a little bit at this point in terms of comparisons i mentioned before the old ones or the lizardmen are really the best direct comparison because they're you know same cost very similar role and unit type uh, i guess not exactly the same cost my bad <laughs> squig herds 50 points more expensive but uh yeah so feral cold ones they do have more weapon strength but less unit models overall and even a thousand less hp so like feral cold ones are so squishy that honestly they're they are usable. Again, fire and forget into an uh, ar armored infantry unit especially, but even just in general armored units, one good charge can pay for themselves. But being even that much squishier, I mean, they do have more armor and uh, a little bit more melee defense as well. Much better leadership, in fact, too. So they do have some benefits in that way. But um, yeah, I mean, honestly, utilize them in a very similar way. Just pick a unit, preferably lower melee defense armored infantry, Fire these guys onto them, and they will get you some really nice value. Um, yeah, the Skaven have the uh, armor-piercing wolf rats, which is a similar... Actually, in terms of damage output, if you discount the anti-infantry, since Squig Herds literally have half the unit models, and slightly more than double the weapon strength, it's a very similar damage output purely on weapon strength. But, of course, you've got 
a lot more charge on the squig herds. They also have the anti-infantry bonus, which gives them a considerable uh, damage buff against infantry, but interestingly, a lot less HP. I mean, obviously makes sense. Half the unit models. More armor, better leadership, though, than the wolf rats, so and obviously much slower. That's kind of the big, big difference, right? So in terms of use, though, you should sort of look at them in a similar way, like... Just one good engagement's really all you need for them to pay for themselves, but uh, definitely give them a think uh, if it's a unit that you have maybe forgotten about. They do still exist. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. See you next time.